All right, we love talking about bees, Mr. David. You know that. Oh, I love you. Got to have bees for your gardens. Got to have bee for harvest time. Yeah. No bees, no squash. No bees, no pumpkins. There it goes. I mean, bees, bees are that important for sure. Mm -hmm. What do you have for us today on the table? Well, on the table, I've got honey, which right. we normally see. This came from Germantown Farm Park. Okay. We recently harvested, and here is honey also. Unlike that one. Wow. This is creamed honey. Natural honey granulates, and if you control the granulation, you get a smooth, creamy honey. This is good for kids. Oh, it's not gonna drip good. on the counters. Hmm. I think that's pretty neat. What you think about that, Mr. D? That's no all right. mess, no mess, man. That's pretty, pretty, good. pretty good. Now, let's hear some of the latest bee information that's out there for you us. You know, there's information, there's infotainment. <laughs> Okay, yeah. And I've, I've been going through the numbers that we've gotten from 2016, 2017 on our bee losses. Okay. The state of Tennessee lost about 49% of our bees. And that sounds scary yeah. until you start actually looking at the pool that they drew that information from. State of Tennessee, we have about less than 60 beekeepers report. Okay. Yeah. People who report are the ones who are actually experiencing loss. Sure. In Shelby County, we have more than 500 beekeepers. Wow. And so we've got less than 1% yeah. showing oh, up. Yeah. And in the nation, we lost about 33% of our bees. Now, since I've been beekeeping bees, I uh, started, we were about 2.5 million colonies. Mm. We got up to 2.7 million colonies. We dropped back down to 2.62. And this year, we're at 2.89. Mm. The numbers I work off of to see how our bees are doing are the USDA NASH report. That comes out April 1st. It comes out quarterly, but the April 1st numbers are the ones that I watch. Okay. Because that's just as we're getting into spring, just as we're getting to hitting the harvest, not the harvest, but the pollination series. We need the bees for that. We do lose bees throughout the year, but the biggest number of bee losses happens with our migratory beekeepers who are taking bees all mm -hmm. over. And when you have a large congregation of bees in one area, they're very social, they share what they have. And if that happens to be a disease, it gets shared. If it happens to be a mite, it gets shared. The USDA and the Bee Informed Partnership has said that the number one killer of our bees is the varroa mite. And that mm -hmm. is a communicable mite, sort of like lice, you know, things of that nature, except it's for bees. It vectors more than 20 different diseases. Wow. And if we can control that mite, we control colony collapse. And the number two is starvation. Starvation. Still. Now, another report that came out just within the last month came from Europe. It's, one, it's, it's a pan-European study of neonicotinoids. Right. And everybody freaks out when we talk about pesticides, because pesticides kill everything. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and my take on the study it was the UK, Hungary, and Germany. And they inoculated, they, they coated rapeseed, planted it, and then put the bees in the middle of those fields. Mm -hmm. UK and Hungary had severe losses. And the losses were anything from the bees not being able to reproduce to the bees just dying. Germany experienced no losses. Mm. And as you read through the report, you're, you're hearing about all these things that the neonicotinoids did. You get to the bottom of the report and it says, and these numbers may be skewed because Germany had strong hives and the bees had another source of pollen and nectar that they could go sure. to. So you take something, put it in the middle of a field and they have nothing else to eat, but nothing that, else to yeah. do. They're going to die. If all you have is cyanide, that's what's going to happen. Right. Germany had no losses. So, in the United States, I'm, I'm still pushing hard. Any problems with your bees can be solved with a strong, healthy colony. Okay. Not diseased. Not diseased. Okay. UK and Hungary had diseased bees in the study. Huh. Okay, you got diseased bees and now you're feeding them something that might kill them or hurt them. They're going to die faster than a strong hive that has other sources of food around them. So how far are neonics on the list then? They didn't make the top 10. I mean, that's, that's the USDA reporting. 2015, 2016, neonics was a little subline. Pesticides may be causing some of our bee losses. That's what, really? Maybe? 
Maybe. Didn't make the top 10. Hmm. Things to think about. Yeah. I've been telling you ever since I've started coming to visit y'all, rural mites. Rural mites. And you have been We saying? control that. In Tennessee, small high wow. beetles. I want to control those two. How do you control the varroa mite? Mm, we have a bunch of different things that we can put out there. There's apistan, apivar, um, even oxalic acid, wood bleach. You mix the wood bleach in with sugar water and there's actually a formula that you use it. And you drizzle it across the cluster of bees. It coats the bees with sugar water. It gets on the mites, it kills the mites. And you have to do that on a three week slide because you wanna make sure that you catch all the bees mm. that are hatching out. You're gonna go all the way and go six weeks, but you also don't wanna do it when you're harvesting honey. So October 1st is when I'm gonna start treating my bees. Okay. It's not a pesticide, it's something natural. By the way, they did a study recently on the wax. Wax is very absorbent. It's a lipid protein, okay. so it absorbs everything. And you can do spectrum analysis on the wax to see what's in there. Uh, this was 2012. The main thrust of the study was the pesticides and the sides that were in there were beekeeper originated and trying hmm. to control mites. Trying to control the mites. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't coming from the fields. Yeah. We kill a lot more bees yeah. than John Doe out there. Wow. Okay. I see you're pondering something there, Mr. Well, B. I'm just saying, not necessarily error. In some cases, you're grabbing at straws to try right. to control it. In a lot of ways, they you know, are. To, to and help. every once in a while, we'll hear of a new thing from one of the other beekeepers. Have you tried this? And like, does that have a label? And that's an important thing. Right. Very yeah. If it hasn't been labeled by a control, the EPA, Right. then you really don't know what you're putting in your bees. And you, and you got yeah. a food source here. And, you know, you got a good yeah, food human source. Food source and mm -hmm. you know, human food, and so you got to be really careful. Yeah. You better follow that label. This is regulated. It is food. Mr. David, that's some good stuff, man. Thank we, you. We appreciate you for being here with that. Oh, you're welcome. All right, thank you much. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.